As we write uh, more and more tests, uh, we encounter several issues. So let's uh, see this uh, test script, which is a pre pretty simple test script. It just has four tests with just calling some, uh, assigning to a variable, and uh, checking whether it's correct. Now, of course, this could be a bit, a bit more complex. For example, it could be that we code a sum function, we assign to an uh, object, and then we do things on this object, and, and then check it, and then we create another object with the same type, a, and uh, do other checks. Now, in order to not to interfere between these tests, we have to use different variable names. But uh, after a while, we run out of variables. So for here, we, we used, reused the, the my dollar, dollar y. Now, actually, if I run this test, uh, it will actually it will, well that test fails, and it also complained about the my variable there. So we'll probably write instead of that we'll just remove this my declaration because y is already uh, declared. So now the test doesn't complain about uh, the, the syntax problem. It fails because the, the actual uh, sum function is incorrect, but that's uh, a different story. We not care about the actual code. We care about the test. So what happens if, if someone comments out this, this line by mistake or just for experiment and then run the script and everything now looks fine? It's obviously not fine, because what's happened here is that this test case had a, a, a side effect or an impact on the other test case. So they were, haven't been really separated. So one of the things is, is how to write more and more separated uh, tests. And for that, one of the ways we, we, you could do is, is put blocks around, um, around the text and then uh, once these blocks are, are in place, then uh, the variables, the $z, $y, and so on, will go out of scope. So if we have still this commented out version, then when you run it, we, it won't even run because the $y in that block is not uh, declared. So obviously we need to not only assign a value, but we also have to declare it with is my otherwise it wouldn't work and then it fails as we expect uh, the test so that's one of the things these these blocks uh, and then of course in this case we don't really need these variable names so we don't have to think up all kind of new variable names every time when we create a block we can use the same exact same variable names because they don't interfere you know, let's just try, run it again it's still the same failure no change has been really made to the actual test. So that's one thing and this blocking uh, is one of the solutions. The other thing is that uh, as we add more and more tests, so now if we go at the end and add uh, another test, uh, I won't do it because it's too much work. If I add another test, I'll have to keep remember to update the number of tests here at the top of the test file. Now as the file goes, it's going back and forth all the time. It's uh, time consuming, uh, we will keep forgetting it. And uh, once we forget to update the number, we have to count all the number of tests, and no one really can count more than 10, or I don't know. So there is a much better solution for that. We can create what's called subtests. So there is a keyword called subtest, uh, and then, well, it won't be a good, really good example in this case, but um, you can use the word subtest and then give some name here, like uh, one, and create a subroutine now because this is a, an assignment, this is a, uh, a statement uh, and not a subroutine declaration just by itself. We have to, not just an empty block, we have to put a semicolon at the end. And with this, we declare the, a subtest. Within the subtest, we can hand plan tests, number of tests, we can plan how many tests we are going to run. And we can do the same with all the other ones. And this is like, uh, let's say, two. Again. And uh, I, I will t run this plan tests here again. So now this time, uh, each subtest is working as its own test um, 
test plan. It has its own test plan. It has its own test counting. So if we have in within this block a number of test, uh, unit tests, we only need to count to make be, be sure that this number matches the plan here. And then the number of tests here is the number of subtests or the number of tests that are that are outside of any of the the tests. So if your tests are are organized well, then probably you'll have a couple of subtests, like say. I don't know, 10 subtests, and within each subtest you'll have about 10 test cases. That's already 100 test cases in a single file, and you still have to count only up to, up to 10. And um, they are also, these are separated because uh, these are blocks, these are subroutines, so the variables don't interfere. Of course, you have to remember that just because the variable went out of scope, it doesn't really mean that everything has been, have been cleaned up. There are other things that can impact one test to the other, environment variables, databases you have to update, update it, or if uh, you created an object that might be a singleton, then every time you'll create that will be the same singleton. So even though the, the variable went out of scope, the next time you create it, it's still the same. So you have to be careful with that. And if you have a memory leak in the script, that's also a problematic issue because obviously that's a, that's a problem in itself. So subtest is, is, is quite good. It doesn't solve everything, of course, but it's a very good step in the right direction.